You know, folks, last Wednesday was a big event in Cebu City for football, where media, guests and sponsors were invited to the Pro League side, DH Cebu Football Club, at their home ground, Barameo Sports Complex. OTB report caught up with Ua Tasik, who's the chairman of the club side, and it was his return after scouting for players and coaches in Turkey. Well, it turned out to be interesting interviews with the help of uh, Ua Tasik, translating for me from Turkish to English when we interviewed the coaches Kakuls and Ostuk. I heard you went on a shopping trip, and it wasn't shopping for food in Cebu. Somebody said turkeys. I said, no, turkeys. But you went to Turkey. Yeah, yeah, Peter. I went to Turkey. I don't know if this is a good sign or bad sign. It is when I was in Turkey, the unluckily the typhoon happened. And there it is. I was in some ways like disappointed. What the what was the damage caused to the stadium and to the city. But later on I later on I recognized is maybe that was the sign for me that I was it was good that I was not here because before I left Turkey the stadium was almost 95% was ready to operate. But after the typhoon we go back to the 50% ready. So if I would be here, of course I could help. Maybe I could uh, protect the stadium better than now. Uh, but in the other way, when I am looking, it would be very difficult for me. And I, I, I am not so sure if my heart would handle the damage caused by the type. So anyway, the stadium is still here. You've done a terrific job with your staff as I look around on the stadium. Beautiful turf here. Uh, I know you're the chairperson of, of the football club, and that's pretty demanding in itself. Tell me why we had a big media night tonight. Yeah. Today was the basically the our city football club, the media day, and open officially opening of the season. Is next week starting the, the Paul Alcan track up. After the Paul Alcan track up, we have the PFL league. So the basically, we, we are announcing to the public that our season officially start. Although we start training almost three months, but to the media and to the public, we want to announce today that the team is going Alcan track up next. Uh, Friday, this Friday, and next Monday we will play first game. Mm -hmm. Then hopefully we bring the trophy to the city. By the way, tell you folks, what was he doing in Turkey? Now, you've got to forgive me because I don't talk, uh, talk Turkish. Turkish delight, I understand, is a dessert. However, hi, I've got to try and pronounce this correctly. Haite is a sports organization. They are in the Super League in Turkey, 8th position. I understand a few more games, if they can win, they'll elevate itself up in the league there. So, who did you bring back from Turkey? First, correction, Hatay. <laughs> Hatay. 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 Hatay support. Yeah. And the tie up with the Hatay support is Metropolitan Mayor of uh, Hatay. We signed the memorandum of agreement that we're gonna change the program, we're gonna change, exchange the players. Some of Turkish players will come here, some of the Filipino players they will move to the play in the So that's good experience, very good experience. There is, is both sides will be amazing experience from Turkish player coming here 
and the players from Philippines going to the uh, Turkey, it will be amazing experience from what part. It's part of the, our uh, partnership with the Hatay Sports. And I want to say thank you very much to Mayor Lutfi Savaş, Dr. Lutfi Savaş. He is amazing guy. He helped us a lot. And today our coaching staff and our Turkish players here because of uh, Dr. Lutfi Savaş's support and believing. And that's why I really appreciate Kakil, uh, Coach Kakil and Coach Levens. So this is Coach Kakil. Mehmet Kakil. Mehmet Kakil. Yeah, tongue twister. Right. Kakir. Levent Öztürk. Oh, an easy one. Levent Öztürk. Levent Öztürk. Or we can say it just <laughs> easy, Coach easy. Levent. <laughs> Coach Levent. Coach Kakir. Kakir. So, gentlemen, we're going to obviously translate this. Um, is this your first trip to Cebu? Yes. 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 Now, are you delighted with our weather? How are you? How are very hot. Very, very hot. Um, you've seen the team, you've trained with the team. What's your impressions? We have young players, talented players. We have young players. We are very delighted to working with young and talented players. Philippine football level, we know, is not that that high comparing to the Europe. Uh, that's why they are here. If they can help and if they can contribute. Now, how about this gentleman here um, uh, in Cebu, the, the standard of playing um, is, it seems to be fast according to weather conditions here. What, what is lacking in Cebu is experience, international experience, which you bring to the table. Cebu in there was no proper and established league. The, 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 the league is not that established. Uh, what is he saying? The lack of the games and the lack of the competition that we are having here in the city. So with the experiences of the Turkish coaches here, um, mm -hmm. obviously the mm -hmm. national team mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. Philippines should be looking at players coming through the system with the experience from the coaches. The Philippine football is clubs or the national team is mostly defensive. Defensive football. We, we want to play the other side, which is offensive side. It's not just defending. It's their most of observation is the Philippine football is mostly defending rather than attacking or offensive football. Then they want to focus. They want to change something, type of football, how we play. The, the way of how I want to play our club is competitive, excitement, fans has to watch not just the defending goals, because at the end of the day, fans came for goals. Yeah. Because the other side is goal. 
e, sanatlarını icra edecekleri yerler de futbol sahaları. Seyircilerimiz de sanat izleyicileri de en iyi sanatlarımızı futbol sahasında borçlarımızla beraber e, en güzel şekilde icra edeceğiz. The football players, you can compare them like a movie star or movie artist. The movie artists, they should perform very well. They should make sure the viewers is happy with the movies, the artists. The football player is the same story. Is they are here to perform, to entertain the fans and to be proud of the fans. Başkanım, eğer kendisi bu, bu şey bu boştaysa kendisi lisanslar çıkartabiliriz. Yarın de, denemeye yes. hemen alalım kendisi. Mr. Coach Levent saying, Yarın please give your IDs and all requirements. He wants tomorrow, to tomorrow. get your license <gülüyor> <gülüyor> to play with us. <gülüyor> Fotoğrafla yarın gelsin. And what with the photos please. Well folks, uh, this is a little unusual. Uh, I, in the past, I had a German coach who won uh, the Greek national side in the European Cup many, many, many years ago. And we did the same, just to promote the game. The language is different, but you know, football is one language. It's enjoying the game here. Football fan Jay Hearn, a well-known entrepreneur in Manila, of course he's owner of restaurants and sports bars, but here's Jay Hearn's comments on football. So, first of all, I know off camera you were saying congratulations to England making the World Cup. Um, Turkey a disappointment. It was a big, big, big disappointment. We started very strong. We were we finished very we weak. Finished very, very fast. We finished very, very weak. But, well, in the European Cup, most probably, we hopefully will do. So, so looking, looking at the, uh, the, the, the other, I'm thinking the other nations that have qualified in setting the course, um, Canada, Canada, which I spent a lot of years there. In your words, tell me how Canada and why Canada has made the World Cup. It's because of the players playing in Europe, and especially in my team in Besiktas. <laughs> Atkinson and uh, Larin, good, good players. So, so uh, looking at the uh, the Canadian side, I mean, it went on the, uh, the Americans must have been sweating. I know my son was sweating. He's part of their coaching. Uh, development program from 14 to 16, where he's got to find and develop players for their uh, Olympics uh, coming up. But um, disappointment for you. But what teams do you think we should be looking at in the World Cup? I am uh, Belgium. I like the way they play. They are really very good team, young team, and they are really aggressive. And they really want. Uh, they could have done better in the European Cup last year, but I am. Uh, hopefully with Belgium team and I will be cheering for them. Now, how about um, France? Yeah, well, France is always the biggest, biggest uh, competitor. France, Spain, England, Brazil. But I am very excited for the Belgium team. That young team. And they play good. Mm -hmm. They play the way I like to watch the game. But another football guest, uh, Gorham Gunnell, who heads up in the Philippines, International Biko. And I've got to tell you this, you know who Biko is because they are the major sponsors of FC Barcelona. Germany. Ah, Germany. Germany is, uh, you know, it's always a big candidate to, to get the World Cup, of course. And, you know, I'm like, I support Germany, you know. I believe they are the big chance to get the cup. Now you you've turned out to be a really good team player, and developer, and a marketer, and uh, God knows what else uh, with your company. I am <laughs> <laughs> actually, of course, in order to be uh, say, you know, in order to have a successful establishment, of course, teamwork is important. You know, collaboration with the. Uh, outside stakeholders, in-house in stakeholders, this collaboration is very important. So, basically, yeah, at the end of the day, I can say teamwork is the best. Of course, these are top range appliances in a very competitive uh, industry throughout the world, of course. But you have an arra arrangement of, uh, of uh, um, appliances, I am thinking, when I was a kid, there was a fridge. Yeah. So, 
and you, you can probably name a few more. Of course, of course. And in Philippines, currently, what we are importing uh, to the Philippines market, or the Philippines market, is refrigerators, washing machines, uh, ovens, uh, air condition, air conditioners, and uh, small domestic appliances. So we have actually A to Z full line of product. Now, uh, I don't, I'm flipping a coin here, but I try and catch it. Barcelona. Oh yeah, That's <laughs> I mean Barcelona and the Beko partnership is almost eight years, and wow. then we've been partnering with them. It was a very successful uh, partnership, and actually, in fact, uh, Barcelona and Beko uh, partnership become one of the case best case studies in the world how uh, appliance industry can collaborate with the football industry. The main reason for that partnership, our brand is providing a healthy lifestyle. So our main motto was like, eat like a pro, live like a pro. So we try to promote uh, in our commercials, like Barcelona football players in our commercials, to promote that lifestyle. You know, it's like you want to be a sportsman, use back of fridge, which products can be pressure, you know, all the other materials if you want to cook, uh, for example. Uh, with our ovens, we can provide the best cooking experience. So that kind of activities uh, is providing a healthy lifestyle. Well, you got to get this guy on board. Do you see how he sold the company? <laughs> exactly. I think he's going to resign from Beko and he will be joining <laughs> our club. <laughs> oh boy, I mean, that, that, that's great. It's great to see uh, international companies come into Asia, come into the Philippines as well. Um, I mean, it's such a big market. And, and, and what it really needs is that strength of marketing, the after sales, and the quality of product. Because, you know, Filipinos, they all talk and say, hey, come and see my fridge. Of course, of course. I mean, actually, the Philippines market, in terms of market, the Philippines has 105 million population, and it's a very promising, growing market. And every year, there's 6% GDP growth. And yeah, because of the pandemic, it was a little bit stuck, but right now it's back on the track again. And uh, the, in terms of market size, every, I mean, I'm also inviting all other European brands to be here because there's an available spot for everyone. And uh, in terms of uh, customer, uh, Filipino customers are very well experienced. They know what they want to buy. When they go to the store, they have already... Uh, you know which feature of the products uh, that they want they already know uh, before they enter the stores so on our side we are, we are trying to provide this uh, to you know to highlight our features to be attract the customers Filipino customers and our product ranges uh, we are trying to come up with the certain features which fits the market uh, for the Filipino customers boy how do I follow that one um, do I do a commercial and say, <laughs> and this has been brought to you in part by Beko and, of course, Cebu Football Club of the Pro League in the Philippines. And finally, on this big football event, we track down the very busy Nimrod Kionis and his passion for football. Nimrod, it's been a really tough year, frustrating, well, almost two and a half years, I should say, with COVID. I mean, you guys, I don't know how you survived as a boardroom trying to organize football, non-contact. But uh, here we are in a media event at the Borromeo uh, Sports Complex here. Yeah. And it's an exciting night. Yes, it's a very exciting night. This is actually the biggest gathering of football people here in Cebu, including, well, the Cebu community in general because we have guys who are not really usually seen in football events who are now here because of this new place and uh, we're all excited that uh, football is back we're gonna have uh, more events we have a great venue that's one of the most important things that's happening there. I've heard a rumor he's gonna start putting uh, socks on, shoes on, shorts on and he's gonna play for a media side uh, they're all ready in my car, so my, my kit is ready there. I just forgot to bring my goalkeeper's gloves, but uh, I'm ready to play, I think. Oh, so you, so you the, he has the easy job. He wants to play in goals there. Not a lot of running around. Me. Well, I, uh, I, I switched between being a goalkeeper and being a striker, so uh, I guess uh, whichever works. I'll tell you what, uh, Nimrod, we don't have a lot of... Uh, 
contact to be making because of COVID. What is happening now? Are we going to see official kickoffs with coaches and junior players around Cebu City? Okay, right now we are preparing for the PFF National Under 19 tournament. So it starts with the group stage. The group stage, uh, our group will be composed of the Central Visayas Football Association, the Leyte Football Association, and the Negros Oriental Siki Hall Football Association. So the winner of this group goes up to Manila uh, for another, uh, for the semifinals and then eventually the finals of the tournament. Now tonight, uh, I mean, looking over the shoulder here, I mean, the number of people that turned out for this media event is colossal. I mean, the food was excellent as well, so we can't, we can't deny that. But uh, let me put it this way. You know, when we talk about uh, new coaches, is there going to be an international barrier with players from uh, the Philippines? Well, I was here last week when they played practice games with our under-19 squad. And then I was listening to the Turkish coaches, and then Ur was uh, translating for them. But then uh, when we talked on the side, I told him, you know, give it a few months, our players will understand Turkish. So it's easy to communicate because as they, they said earlier, they're fluent in football. And football is an international language that we guys can talk about even without opening our mouths. Uh, exactly. <laughs> One of the questions I'm often asked is, uh, what about uh, I think it's Cebu is uh, coaching courses, uh, player, player development, how does that work out for you? Okay, during the pandemic, we did a lot of online training for coaches, we also are doing an online training for referees, but then after this, uh, we have scheduled a face-to-face -face training for new referees, and then one of our A license coaches, uh, Jingoi Roa is also in the board of the Central Visayas Football Association. Just recently graduated from an instructor's course in Luzon. So now he is qualified to be an instructor so we can hold more uh, Philippine youth coaching courses here in Cebu without having to bring in a lot of people from Manila. So this is very good because we're gonna introduce it to the DepEd, we're gonna introduce it to the barangays. So hopefully we'll have a bigger football community because of this development. I let the cat out the bag and my producer's going to kill me for this. When I get back in September, I've got to go to Canada and do some uh, research from TV and then I'm coming back. Uh, I think it, yeah, at the end of August. But we are going to launch what we call Field Reporting. And it's going to be aimed at the young kids right the way up the development with the help of Cebu Football Association. Well, definitely we'll be very happy to help anything for the love of football. We're here, a lot of us are here because our kids used to play the game. We did play the game, some of us learned to play the game because our kids play the game, learned to love the game, but then we are all here for that one language that we speak, that's football. And uh, no matter what age we started playing, and no matter what stage we are now, whether we're still playing, we're just watching, or we're just happy to be on the football field, we are one football community and we'll be happy to help out in any way. Nimrod, you put a lot of effort, you a lot of commitment, a lot of time, and that's family time, into developing football at that uh, particular uh, level. I mean, where do you get the energy from? Because you run a very successful golf, uh, golf club. From here. From uh, the heart. Yes, yes. It's the love for the game, it's, it's the love for, for our kids. Our kids play football, we know we, they enjoy it, so we are here for them, we are here for the sport and uh, we hope to encourage more parents to get their kids into football or any other sport because sports is really enjoyable and it's a great way to bond with family. Well, there you got it, I can tell you. I mean, this is incredible. I've been living here apparently, what, almost four years now and the effort that does go in at the boardroom level. I mean, we all have that little niggle, they could do better, they could do this, but you know what? They've got barriers, they've got excitement there, they've got dedication there, and it just proves with Nimrod here. And Nimrod, you know, once again, I know we kept you back on this night there, but uh, listen, take care. And you and I will be speaking, uh, let's say, September, when we launch our new uh, field report. Anytime. I'll be very happy to, to guest on your show on the ball report. 
And then I think this is the second time, and I'm, I'm sure you're gonna invite me again. Uh, I'm just assuming, but then I'm very sure because Rene is my good friend, also aside from you. Well, Rene, Rene tells me, I'm gonna tell you folks, Rene tells me my English humor sometimes, oh, oh, oh is not good. You know, so I think it's a joke, it, it isn't. But anyway, Nimrod, once again, thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you also, Peter, and uh, well, to everyone, let's support the Cebu Football Club. Tara Sibu This has been brought to you by Sun Sports and Bad Beat Sportswear. Share, like, subscribe and ring the bell for news, interviews, breaking stories. Thanks for watching on the Ball Report. <laughs>